in today's video we're going to be discussing how to measure your stack height on your clutch. So first let's begin with what is a clutch stack height. It is the height that's measured behind the flywheel to the top of the fingers of the clutch. So in front of me we have a flywheel, we have a pressure plate, a friction disc, and then we also have another pressure plate and a fr friction disc. These two are performance clutch. This is an original OEM clutch for a 370Z. This is a 370Z flywheel. So in today's video, I'm going to be installing this pressure plate onto this flywheel and measuring the stack height. And I'm going to be installing this pressure plate as well and measuring the stack height to see if there's a difference and to show you exactly how to do that. So just in case you were wondering, why do I need to know this information? Well, depending on the slave cylinder that you're using and the combination of the flywheel and the pressure plate, some of them will work for your application and some of them won't. Sometimes you might have to add a shim behind one of these for it to properly engage and disengage your clutch. You see, when it comes to one of these centric slave cylinders, there's only so much travel that this is allowed to go back and forth so it could engage and disengage your clutch. So depending on the combination that you get, there might be a possibility that this is compatible with what you're putting together or it might not be. That's the whole reason why I'm making today's video. There's been a couple of viewers that have asked me questions about combining a clutch with a certain flywheel and vice versa. So I just, I'm making a video to explain how to measure the clutch stack height and why should you do it. So let's go ahead and get started. If you look in the back of the flywheel, okay, right here, this is the part that bolts onto the crank. This is the part that you're gonna be measuring from. You're gonna be measuring from the flat surface behind the crank. The reason why you would wanna put some type of block like I have here, this is, this is metal, okay? or some type of wood, make sure it's nice and flush. It's because if you put a straight edge on this flywheel and you was to lay it flat, you can see there's a gap here, okay? And if you was to lay this flat on the table and take a measurement from the top to the bottom, it would be an inaccurate reading. You can see my finger here. There's a lot of space here. So you want to use some type of a block that when you flip this over, this sits flat on the table and the flywheel can sit on top of it, sitting nice and flush to take an accurate reading. This part is very important. So I'm gonna go ahead and place this piece right here and I'm gonna set the flywheel on top of it. So now I can take a accurate reading. So next what you're gonna do is go ahead and assemble the whole flywheel and clutch assembly. So you're gonna put your friction disc, how it goes, and remember guys, this part that has the lip always faces up. You place it in there, and then you sandwich everything together. Another thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is center the friction disc onto, in relation to the pressure plate. So make sure the friction disc, it's about center to the pressure plate. It does not have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be exactly in the center, but about the center will work just fine. So the next thing you're gonna do is bolt on the pressure plate to the flywheel. Now this part's also very important because you're gonna wanna sandwich it down just like if it was installed onto your engine. So the next thing you're going to do is follow the torque specs and the torque sequence that it requires to bolt the pressure plate to the flywheel. So now that you have everything torqued down, just like we have it right here, and you're going to get a caliper, you're going to zero it in, and then you're going to measure from weight in the bottom, okay? and I am using this little spacer right here, and you're gonna measure to the top of the fingers on the pressure plate. And remember, you're measuring to the bottom of the spacer if you're using one. All right, so I got a reading of 
So I'm gonna go ahead and log this. We're gonna disassemble everything and we're gonna take the measurements from the aftermarket one. All right, so I have the stock one disassembled. Now I'm gonna go ahead and assemble the aftermarket one just so we could compare to see if there is a difference. So now that I have everything torqued down, I'm gonna go ahead and install the spacer. Okay, so now it's sitting nice and flush on that spacer and let's go ahead and take another measurement. And just so it could be very accurate, I zeroed it in. Okay, and let's take that measurement and see where we're at. I have no idea what's gonna happen, how much it's gonna be, how much of a difference there's gonna be. But that's why we're conducting this experiment to teach you guys and how to do this and the different variations that when you combine these together, what you end up with. All right, so I'm ending up with 84.23. And just so we can compare what would happen if you wasn't to put a block behind this clutch, let's remove it. And now I'm getting 95.24. All right guys, so let's discuss what we have discovered here. Okay, we have the stock clutch and pressure plate, okay? The friction disc and pressure plate together. We had a uh, combination of these two. We had 89.29 millimeters, okay? We have the aftermarket one, the same flywheel. I did not change the flywheel. We have a combined stack height of 84.23, okay? So that is the difference between four to five millimeters. Four to five millimeters isn't that much. And let me show you what it looks like. So this is about five millimeters, okay, of space, which isn't that much. But when you're combining one of these uh, slave cylinders to the combination of flywheel and pressure plate that you have going on, depending on what this is allowed to travel, how much distance this is allowed to travel, you might encounter a problem. So what do I mean about that? let's say to fully disengage this, this clutch you have to travel an extra five millimeters like you have here you're only you're limited to how much travel you have okay so this is fully compressed and then you you clutch in and this extends to disengage the clutch okay if you're missing a whole other five millimeters to fully disengage that clutch you're not going to be able to properly disengage the clutch you're probably going to burn out the clutch prematurely you're going to run into all sorts of complications you won't be able to put it into gear you might get some grinding okay you're going to have a problem you're not going to be happy so what should you do you should always measure measure the stack height to make sure when you're combining the two pieces together or three pieces together that everything is going to work properly and also remember when it comes to measuring the stack height, remember, like I told you before, measure from the back of the surface of this, because we took the comparison when it laid flat on the table. We had 95 millimeters. We went from, 90, from 84 to 95. That's a huge difference. So that could throw off your measurement altogether if you measure this improperly. All right, so here's something I almost forgot to mention. Okay, I took all these measurements, okay? Does this mean I did the homework for you? Absolutely not. These are used parts, okay? This is a used pressure disc, okay? Friction disc, this has a used friction disc, okay? All of these measurements are based on what I have in front of me. As you start to wear down on your friction disc, the stack height, it's going to start to change. It's gonna become higher and higher. So these measurements that I took were specifically just for these in front of me, okay? It doesn't mean you use these numbers and then you install your slave cylinder or you, you say, hey, I'm in the safe zone. Take your own measurements, make your own measurements before you install anything. So when should you have to worry about this? Because you're not always gonna have to measure the stack height. When should you have to? Well, whenever you're going 
with an aftermarket, some type of performance clutch, or you're combining two pieces together, okay? You're combining maybe a stock flywheel with an aftermarket pressure plate and a friction disc. Uh, perhaps you're having two different manufacturers and you're combining it together. You're trying to determine the stack height. Or even when you order a slave cylinder, you want to make sure that aftermarket slave cylinder, that performance slave cylinder, hopefully you're upgrading instead of downgrading. You're upgrading your slave cylinder. You want to make sure it's compatible with the stack height. When don't you need to worry about the stack height? Well, if you're replacing OEM parts, if you're getting it straight from the manufacturer, you're getting just the stock flywheel, the stock pressure plate, and the stock friction disc, you do not have to worry about any of this, okay? Everything has been pre-measured for you. You know everything works together, and as long as you're using that slave cylinder combined with the pressure plate, flywheel, and friction disc, you know everything's gonna work just fine. So I hope this clears up some of the questions that I have had. Uh, thank you so much for asking those questions. Like that, I can make a video like this to better help you guys. Well, until the next one, we'll see you.